It actually is. And especially right now at this time of year, I consider this the going into the all time sugar high season. Mm -hmm. Wait, Halloween? Kind of starts, or? Yeah, <laughs> Halloween and then Thanksgiving and Christmas, um, um, New Year's. All of those holidays are just jam packed with sugar. And we don't understand, but all of this, because of the blood sugar imbalances, creates emotional challenges. It creates more irritability, depression, and it creates more sicknesses, sicknesses as well as weight gain. Mm -hmm. And it's all because of all the extra sugar that we're getting. Well, you know, you think of, uh, at least I think of, uh, little kids when they've had too much sugar and they're bouncing off the walls. Um, right. You know, th th this kind of uh, sugar imbalance uh, can cause all kinds of different problems. Then, huh? Right, wow. absolutely. And we're gonna go into a lot of the different problems that it causes. You know, historically, sugar, the consumption of sugar back, let's say in the 1700s, was like, what, what, what did we say? It's four pounds of sugar per year wow. per person. And then in the 1800s. And that, that in and of itself sounds, sounds like a lot. Yeah, yeah that, that was back yeah, in the 1700s. 1700s yeah. right? And, and then a lot of people didn't even have access to really probably exactly, a lot of sugar. Right? Probably not at all. Yeah. And then in the 1800s, it was up to like 18 pounds of sugar. And then in the 1900s, it like tripled in size to what it was 90 pounds of sugar. I don't even want to know where we're at now. Then fast forward to 2009, <laughs> and we're talking about a half a pound of sugar per day, not in the year. That's like 1,800, whether it was eight, 180 pounds of sugar. I can't. Right. You know, a year. A year. That's 2009. So, like, who knows what happens? And then we've got, like you said, Halloween and just what kids can consume during Halloween over three cups of sugar. And then, of course, we always start early because we're buying them early and you got to break the bag open. <laughs> right. And then <laughs> afterwards. Well, you got to make sure it's all safe, left. you know. Exactly. <laughs> so, no, but, but, uh, so, wow. You know, I think at, at, you know, a quick first glance, one might think, well, gosh, I don't eat that much sugar. I mean, you got this mental image of someone holding up a, a five pound bag of CNH sugar and just pouring it down their throat. It's not just necessarily the sugar you put in a drink or the sugar that you put on a dish that you're fixing. There's sugar in a lot of different things, right? There is sugar in everything. And, and if you read the labels, it's interesting to find out you've got it high in bread, in salad dressings, in chips, in peanut butter. I mean, those aren't even the sweet things. It's not the cookies and candies and the desserts that we're eating. It's all the other things that we're eating that just add up. So I can keep on eating my desserts? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Anyway, um, so it's interesting. And, and, you know, we were talking before the show. I mean, even one of my big weaknesses is I love fresh baked bread. And uh -huh. uh, there's a, a lot of different things that turn to sugar once we consume them. Yes, and that, so we talked about sugar as being the one number one culprit, but all of our starches because they all turn to glucose in our system or the sugar. So all, all and the then breads, fruits and breads, know. processed foods, um, uh, fruits, all of those things on top of the sugar, mm. it's all sugar. And so that's where the real challenge is. Well, so, you know, when you see w what moms typically are feeding their children on any given day, uh, and of course, you know, mom's got to eat it too. Um, you know, this is this becomes a real challenge. Yes, it becomes a real challenge because we wake up in the morning and for breakfast they're eating bagels and donuts and pancakes and waffles and toast and mm. cold cereal and then and even maybe fruit. Mm -hmm. But then for lunch they're eating peanut butter jelly sandwiches and fruit and chips and and then for dinner it's pastas and rice and potatoes and and more breads and more desserts and maybe more fruit, but it's all sugar by the end of the day. And we don't realize the damage that is coming from this and how much sugar that we really are consuming. Wow, that's, that's interesting perspective. Now, when you talk about, you know, I, mean, I think breakfast is probably the one where I've been, I don't typically eat breakfast, but when I do, you know, it's, uh, it's I mean, you, you were mentioning all of my favorites and French toast <laughs> and all of those kind of good things. Powdered sugar on yeah. it. <laughs> and of course, then you got sweetened juices and everything else, uh, and, and all of that is sugar. But you, you also mentioned, uh, you know, peanut butter, and I never even thought about oh uh, sugar in peanut butter. Even the natural peanut butter right. will have added sugar in it. You well, have to really so. learn to read labels because it's amazing. And like I said, chips and 
jerky. Have you tasted jerky lately? You can't even find any without sugar unless you go online to a special store. It's ridiculous what kind of, uh, that they're adding sugar to everything, everything you eat. We went to out to eat last night and the dressing was so horribly sweet. It was just horrible. Right. Hmm. And everything is just sweetened to the max in today's world. I, there's something sacrilegious about the idea of adding sugar to beef jerky. Jerky. It I mean, is terrible. I make my own jerky and I just, I never thought about adding Oh sugar. my gosh. It's, it's really terrible how much sugar is added. So. Interesting. So, uh, and obviously by the, the numbers, Donalyn, that you were mentioning earlier, I mean, this is something that has become pervasive in, in just about every aspect of our diet these days. And then, you know, sometimes we'll think, well, we're going to be healthy now. So <laughs> we're going to have like whole grain bread, you know, because it sounds healthier or all these other things that are just, but they, they're still carbs mm -hmm. and, you know, carbs turn to, you know, sugar right. once it's processed, metabolized, and then carbs is carbs yeah. and overconsumption is overconsumption. Right. So even when you're, playing that game and you're thinking you're doing better, it still kind of comes out the same way. So, uh, I don't, you know, when I, when I think of this, I, you know, obviously there are some real uh, challenges that this can cause for you, you know, physiologically as far as your blood sugar. Uh, you know, obviously super important for supporting good health in general. Um, so this is having, with all these sugars coming at us from so many different directions, this is having a, a negative effect uh, that is something that we really need to be paying attention to. Oh, absolutely. I think another culprit that people just don't really understand, and I kind of fell into this trap uh, for a few years, that to keep our blood sugar level stable, we need to eat more often, five to six meals a day. I mean, have you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I did that for a while, but the problem with that is your body is producing insulin all day long. And we have to understand that there's a reason to skip, you know, uh, either do fasting or go between meals. That's basically a better choice, and I'll talk about that in just a minute and try that fat. Yeah, when it comes to you know, again, I'm I'm saddened to to realize how much of a problem my breads are. <laughs> but one of the things I've heard a lot about too is that um, a lot of these grains and stuff that go into our breads have been genetically modified. Right. Does that play a factor in all of this? Hugely, absolutely. Because the genetically modified foods. Of course, and, and you can avoid them by really looking for organic or clearly labeled non-GMO, but otherwise they just, they kind of put into your system these cells that, you know, cause havoc. Mm -hmm. And so they take down your immunity because they're just causing problems. Yeah, it was just a few years ago over in India where uh, uh, they, a company whose name I, I won't even repeat. Um, Start with an M. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> an ensign on Santa. Um, but the uh, um, the uh, uh, they had come up with a, a genetically modified, uh, uh, I think it was uh, corn, uh, that uh, they talked to a lot of the uh, you know indigenous folks into planting, and uh, uh, most of them after harvesting their first crop said this doesn't taste right and we don't like it and they tried to go back to the uh, the old uh, type of seed the following year, but the modification on the corn that they had gotten from that company had uh, made the soil such that it wouldn't grow anything else. And he had farmers, I mean, significant numbers of farmers that were committing suicide over that. And it's, I mean, it's, uh, it's a travesty. You know, it's a whole other talk show for another time. But, totally. But it's, uh, it's scary. It's running our bodies. It's running our soil. It's running our foods. It's, it's running us. Mm -hmm. And we don't realize how important it is to stay away from that kind of stuff. But this should just kind of help us, you know, just get that inkling of, you know, there's a real problem here and we need to do something about it. And we need to understand that this high sugar consumption and the um, influx of our um, balancing our blood sugar is not only affecting us as adults, but it's really affecting children. Children are a future generation. And when they have so many behavioral disorders, um, attention oh, disorders. Oh, you've met my kids. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. And learning disabilities and obesity, even in their young ages, mm -hmm. we need to think differently. We can do something about it, but 
Are we ready to? Are we ready to really make some lifestyle changes that will really make a difference? Well, and there's bound to be somebody listening that's thinking, well, I'm not diabetic. I don't have any problems. This can't be causing any problems for me. And, and that's really kind of uh, a misconception. It is a misconception because we have several things that stem from this kind of thing. Right. Including just taking down your immunity. Really? You know, by, by not, um, you know, staying away from sugar helps your body, you know, metabolize healthier, and then your your immune system is raised. And so it's not just about like mentally and, you know, being ADD or all these things, but it is really a helpful thing as far as not taking down your immunity. So you're saying like if people, <coughs> excuse me, speaking of a need for more better immunity, um, if people are, you know, finding themselves uh, uh, chronically, you know, catching every cold that comes around and right. stuff like that, it might be because of the amount of sugar right. in your diet? Exactly. Wow. So your body is compromised by, mm -hmm. you know, all this extra, you know, these radicals in your system. And your body doesn't have a chance to fight off viruses and, you know, keeping your immunity up. You've got, you know, biggest thing going right now we, we talk about is COVID-19. You know, by just being healthier, you know, eating, yeah. eating healthier. healthier. Now, the, healthier vitamins. I'm, I'm sure this affects a lot of different uh, uh, you know, parts of the body. Uh, what about the pancreas? Definitely. The second thing is it really does affect our blood sugar balances. And most people don't realize what the threat this is, but the more sugar you eat, the more it does affect your pancreas. And most of us have heard about insulin, but very few people have heard about glucagon. And so I wanted to really share this with you because if you understand this a little bit better, these are both hormone partners mm -hmm. that are secreted from the pancreas and they are what really keep our blood sugar in check. They're kind of the yin and yang mm -hmm. of our blood sugar and keeping it in balance. So our insulin is created by our beta cells. It is what keeps our uh, blood sugar, I mean, it, it, when we eat a diet that's high, and like the refined carbs, it actually, um, what it's doing is it, more insulin is produced and it takes the sugar out of the blood and actually stores it as fat. That is to be able to store the fat for energy. Well, when we overeat, our pancreas goes into overtime producing more insulin and the problem with that is that it can take too much sugar out of the blood and too much sugar out of the butt blood actually means low blood sugar again, mm -hmm. which leaves us craving for what? More sugar. So it's a terrible vicious cycle. Yeah, it is a vicious cycle. It, it just is low blood sugar to high blood sugar. Well, not only is it storing more fat, and that's where the weight gain comes in, but the bigger problem of that is that it actually, um, um, let me <laughs> go back to my notes. It keeps our blood sugar unstable, and it actually causes us, our body, to produce that insulin. So eventually, our body can not produce insulin, and we know what that means, it's mm -hmm. diabetes. Right. But the other thing that it also creates is a risk at all of these other major diseases. Now, secondly, we have glucagon, and that is produced by our alpha cells. And actually, it is there to, it is produced in times when we are either fasting or between meals when we're exercising or when we're eating a different set of foods. For instance, our uh, leafy green vegetables and our low sugar vegetables, as well as good proteins and fats, all of those things are, we pr can produce the, the glucagon, our pancreas can. And actually, we have to keep in mind that only one is being produced at a time. So insulin is there to actually for stored energy, but glucagon we want produced to be able to burn our energy. And your pancreas is only producing one or the other at a time. It can't be producing both. And, and if we want to be in fat storing mode, eat more sugar because it's producing more insulin. If we want to be in fat burning mode, then we want that glucagon to be produced. And that's gonna only happen, like I said, between meals, fasting, eating the right kinds of foods. So it really puts it on our shoulders. We have a lot 
that we can be in, more in control of with our weight gain simply based on this. Now you mentioned between meals fasting. Are you just talking about making sure you're not uh, snacking on stuff between meals? That's or? right. So when you're more in a fasting state in between meals, your body or your pancreas is secreting that glucagon and that's what helps you burn fat. So if you're eating those five or six meals a day or always snacking, you're, grazing you're on free always, <laughs> yeah, you're always producing insulin all day long and there's so much danger in that. So, you know, I, I, I think the, the, you know, the basic premise here is pretty easy to, uh, uh, to grasp, but the, the tougher thing, at least for people like me is, so what can we do about this? Yes. Well, well you know, just... one thing that you can do is start like with a diet diary, just for a few days, just to give yourself an idea, start writing down what you eat. I mean, every little, oh, that chip doesn't count. But when you start to see Snickers, Snickers <laughs> you know, payday. Right. Oh, yeah. Um, That's but, only on Friday. <laughs> right. <laughs> but you start to see what your um, pattern is. Mm -hmm. One thing that I found help, is helpful after just doing that is to go and I use this app called MyFitnessPal.com hmm. and you can do it on your phone. You can download it on your phone or your desktop and it does everything as far as it's got a big database so you can pull off all your um, normal foods, the you know commercial foods that you might eat. They'll be right in there and they load it for you so you can see everything from proteins all the way down to sodium but you certainly have your carbs, your fats, your sugars. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, it'll give you a good total of what to do and what not to do. And then if you're trying to lose weight, you've already put in what your goal is and it will tell you, like if you eat like this for a week, you're gonna be down this amount mm -hmm. approximately. Mm -hmm. It's a great way to really see, you know, down to the numbers, well, not just look visually seeing six chips or you know well and if you're setting goals it sounds like that's going to be a, a, a way to really be uh, accountable yeah, track yeah. Mm -hmm. well what about uh, you know with these uh, uh the gmo grains and stuff like that uh, i mean are you talking about just across the board limiting those in our diet or what you know as much as we can we just need to get rid of our gmo grains get rid of the processed foods get rid of of many of our refined and even limit our whole grains and whole grain breads. Just keep them more at a minimum because if we want to, again, have good blood sugar balance, you know, less risks of health diseases and, and all of the emotional stuff and everything that goes with it, then let's concentrate more on our vegetables. Have we said this before? No. <laughs> more vegetables and, and <laughs> um, great proteins and fats. I mean, that's where we're going to be put into fat burning mode. I think we've heard a lot about this in the last you know, few years, but we're not putting it into practice like we could. So just eliminate a lot of that stuff. I even noticed that some of the commercial pasta brands, you know, if you're not making your own spaghetti sauce per se, but they're even infusing them with, you know, like a lot of sugar, uh, but mm -hmm. also like an Alfredo sauce, they're using cauliflower instead of, so they are trying, I mean, it's still not ideal, but there are ways of getting food in. And there's even books out. There's one by, um, Seinfeld's, um, what's his name again? Jerry Seinfeld. His wife did one. There are two books, actually. I think one is called um, Sneaky Chef, and it's how parents can learn, and we can certainly learn also, how to incorporate vegetables in our baked goods more or in our, you know, by blending sometimes the food up, you know, vegetables up and right. putting them in your food. Well, you know, again, as a foodie, I, 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 as a kid, let me back up. I vegetables very few of them uh, I, I like raw vegetables but cooked you know you, you lose so much of the nutritional value a lot of times if you overcook that stuff anyway but um, I, I was never much into eating vegetables but if you really take a little bit of time to to research some recipes uh, I, and just a real quick for instance I have always pretty much uh, loathed Brussels sprouts um, not only did I not enjoy the flavor, I didn't enjoy the way it made the house smell. Right. I just, it wasn't much <laughs> it's good a about smelly it. smelly one. And I was over in the Bay Area on business here a few months back, and, and uh, uh, the fine folks that were hosting me took me out to a lunch in this wonderful little Bayside uh, outdoor cafe. And, 
And of course, they ordered up a big, huge plate of Brussels sprouts. And I was thinking, mm, this is going to test my ability to keep a poker face and try and seem appreciative when I'm actually wanting to gag. But uh, whatever they did, I mean, it was sautéed in red wine and some other stuff, and they really, I mean, it, it was amazing. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't nasty. Um, and so it, it, there are recipes out there for accomplishing these kind of things. Yeah, and I was going to add to what you said. Um, I made the cauliflower mashed potatoes mm -hmm. recently, and I sat down. I didn't say anything to my husband. He ate them down. He loved them. And he didn't even know the difference. He hates cauliflower. Mm -hmm. The fact that you can make cauliflower mashed potatoes, just steam cauliflower, right. blended and seasoned. And it really oh is pretty gosh, much a non good. a non flavor for the most part. I mean, you it can, was, you can you know, take on a flavor right. just about whatever you mix with it. Well, the fact that you could really pre replace all that starch with something good. I right. mean, we had a dinner at friend's house last week, and. Um, she made potato salad but used cauliflower <gasps> instead, really? and it was wonderful. It tasted, you know, it had that cauliflower smell right when, when she <laughs> lifted the lid to it. But other than that, it was awesome. Wow. So if you just hold your breath the whole time? <laughs> Forget about it really quick. It was just great. So you oh, know there's ways. And that's what's such a beauty about the Internet is that there's so much available right. by just Asking, you know, and, and asking we, Google. we've got more information here than we have time to share this morning. We're just about out of time. But if people want to uh, uh, kind of boost their immune system, uh, you actually have a recipe um, that we're, we're going to be posting up to Facebook. Um, but can you give us like the Reader's Digest condensed version? Yes. Of, actually, of something that will actually help you. We are actually, hey, going to make everybody yum here today. <laughs> here we so are. these are balls. They yeah. kind of uh, melted a little bit on the way, but you're welcome to try them while we're talking here. So these are actually, uh, I call these immunity balls, or immunity bites. You have to, work, basically, you have to work on that branding a little bit. <laughs> immunity <laughs> bites. So it's not jumping out of the bowl at me. Basically, they sense, yeah. are um, shredded coconut, almond butter, uh, freeze-dried blueberries. That's what makes them a little crunchy. I really like the freeze-dried blueberries. Mm. But anyway, they mm. have some essential oils, the On Guard and the Wild Now, is it orange. blueberries or blueberries? Blueberries, I'm okay. sorry. Yeah, I just wanted to be sure it wasn't some other berry I wasn't familiar with. Chia. And then it has the monk fruit sweetening. Now, occasionally I do use that, especially for something sweet because it's low glycemic, but I find that if we can actually just really work on going more to our plant foods, healthy fats, healthy proteins, and really cut so out good. those sugar sweetenings and, and use some that are really better for your blood sugar, and it, it really will help. So you know, uh, just in all honesty, these are delicious. They're mm -hmm. really good. So what, what's making this sweet? Like I said, the monk fruit sweetening. Monk fruit. And if you've not heard of monk fruit, it's a natural sweetener. You've got to go online. And a lot of times I get frustrated when people call that an artificial sweetener. We've got sweet and low. We've got some of these that are dangerous chemicals, and these aren't. So stevia is actually a plant that I've grown in my garden. Hmm. And so if you get a good natural sweetener that is low glycemic, then you can make a few of these and really boost your immune system instead they're of sabotage so it. So uh, there, there's some, <laughs> right. go ahead, enjoy. <laughs> and they were never seen again. There's, no, they're good. But the fact is we can do a lot to boost our uh, immune system and be able to balance our blood sugar. That's what it's all about. And we can go into this ho holiday in looking for healthy proteins and fats and more vegetables and just really paying attention to what we're eating and putting into this body gift that we have been given. So. Well, you know, as um, really a self-proclaimed food whiner, I mean, I, I, if, if something tastes lousy, I usually tell you, um, I'm picky that way. But this is really good. And the fact that this is actually good for you I mean, what a win-win. And, yeah. and you don't have to bake them. You don't it's have to bake better. them at all, <laughs> right? I mean, it's just so easy yeah. to, for mom to throw it together, for us, you know, to have a snack. And, and is there and, a place here in Payson where you can get all of these ingredients? Yes, we could definitely go to Back to Basics. Back to Basics is a good place those, to go. So. Well, great. Yeah, I like Back to Basics, and there are some things that's a safe way to Yeah, and yeah, just so. I mean, they do carry yeah, more do. things now, which is great, but of course, Back to Basics has it all there. Now, is this the recipe we're going to post up to Facebook? Yes, we're going to post that, and if anybody has any questions, you want me to give them yeah, yeah, sure, okay. email. So, ask at erlenetilton.com, which is E-R-L-E-E-N. 
T I L T O N dot com. Okay, we'll post so, that up on Facebook as well. Yeah, and then you can get the specific uh, recipe or ask your questions or whatever. But it's all about balancing the blood sugar. Just you know. And and so attention. just one more minute. Um, exactly. You know, for people that may have just kind of glazed, excuse me, glazed over this, uh, the positive effects of this versus uh, I don't you know a chocolate and coconut cookie bar or something like that. I mean, uh, this really has a lot of positives where the other Absolutely. has a lot of negatives. Absolutely. And like I said, this is all support about supporting immunity and balancing your blood sugar. And that's our aim and should be our aim to stay healthy. And, and keep the kids from bouncing off the walls. Absolutely. Don't yeah, like it? Gotta love it. Yeah, I think I, I, that's a very unusual, I mean, I, I couldn't really put my finger on what the, the taste that I was tasting was, but it's really good. It is know. great. And if it wasn't, and you know, in November, right here on the air. In November, we're going to actually go into K Ren's kitchen, Ooh. which is very exciting. And yep. we're going to go over some of the holiday treats and foods that you can Ooh, kind like of set it. yourself ready for Thanksgiving and then Christmas. And yeah, then and in, you know, in December, we're going to be able to even do some holiday gifts and some n other treats that are a lot of fun. So, yeah, Spreading. these next two months are going to be awesome. I know, be a excited. Lot of fun. Because we wanted to do this kitchen thing a long time ago. <laughs> so we're finally going to get in there and... I like it. Yeah, I, I'm looking do some fun to things. Again, we've been talking this morning with uh, Erlene Tilton and Donalyn Williams, and, and uh, they've got a bunch of other great ideas. We're going to be posting up uh, this recipe on our Facebook page, so uh, check back there in a little bit. And those of you that have been joining us on Facebook Live, yay, thanks Thank for being you. here.